So the, this is about uh, digital approaches to measuring air quality. Um, and this is one particular digital device. It's called the Air Quality Egg. In fact, it's more of a project than actually a product. And I'll say a bit more about why that is uh, in a moment. Whoops. <laughs> oh, there we go. I don't know why there's a blank page there. So, um, we're quite, quite used to the idea of having electronic monitors for air quality. So, something like a smoke detector, for example, is one quality of air. Um, but also there's things like its temperature, that's another air quality. Uh, and carbon monoxide, well that's, that's a pollutant, so that's a potentially another. So you can see that measuring air quality has real uses in our everyday life in terms of our safety and well-being. Now, one thing about this is, that although it might connect to the mains, it's not on the net, it's not net enabled. Um, so for example, I couldn't interrogate this smoke detector over the internet. I couldn't say, do you need a new battery? Or if it was battery powered, or um, what's, what's the levels of smoke like? Is there any? When did, when, when did I last test it? Or when do I need to change the, the sensor, perhaps, because the sensors degrade over time? So, there's also, so that's an example of an electronic non-web enabled um, air quality monitor. So the key thing about the air quality egg is that it's connected to the internet, so it's part of what's known as now the internet of things. The idea is that even the humble refrigerator will be on the net. Um, we're going to live in a pervasive society of internet enabled objects. Uh, I, your imagination can run riot really. I, so, the air quality air consists of two parts. One is a base station, which uh, is inside the building, say your home, and the other is a, a sensor box which goes outside to sample the outside air quality. So, this is what the inside of that egg-shaped case looked like. It's the, uh, that's the air quality egg. Sorry, that's the. In fact, both sides. Am I correct in saying this? Both sides. Both. The sensor board and the air quality egg are in the same case. Uh, no. So there's two eggs. There's two eggs. Yeah. Yeah. One yeah. Goes outside and yeah. Yeah. Inside, yeah. So beside your modem. Yeah. So there's base station and there's an outside sensor, and they are both in a case that looks similar, but inside they're very different. So the sensor board looks like this, that goes outside, and this is the base station that's in your home on your kitchen table or sideboard or whatever. And this connects to the internet. This is actually uh, where you plug your ethernet cable in here. Um, you don't see this board, of course, inside the egg, inside the case. Uh, that communicates, the base station communicates with the sensor board over radio connection. So this is actually the aerial on both sides. And on the sensor board, the sensors plug in here. So you've got one sensor for nitrogen dioxide, plugs in there, uh, another for temperature and humidity. So that's three things that, that the uh, air quality egg senses, and that there are other things you can add as well, other sorts of sensors. So it supplies a kit. Did you buy yours as a kit? I got mine as a sample. Uh, so uh, I got mine as a uh, assembled item. So there's uh, um, two guys in Wales called uh, Open Energy Monitor, yeah. and um, they they're selling them as fully assembled uh, okay. products, I guess. Right. So hang on to the microphone. Yeah. So one of the things about the Air Quality Egg is that. You can interrogate your egg or the readings from your egg in an internet browser, and the internet browser could be uh, it could be on your phone, for example. You could be at home, but you could be at work. You could be anywhere. You could be somewhere else in the whole globe, 
and interrogating what the air quality or temperature is um, from your air quality egg. So this is actually was a, was a prototype design uh, of what the dashboard for the air quality egg might look like. So you can see, uh, well this is carbon monoxide. Is it, does yours actually measure carbon monoxide? It did, but it doesn't work anymore. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, but yeah, it comes to the default kit comes with carbon uh, monoxide sensor as well. Okay. Um, and uh, so there's a there's public map and you can look at the different values for the different sensors. Um, let me ask you a question, Jason. How accurate do you think the temperature is? Have you sort of compared the temperature from the egg with, I don't know, the BBC weather forecast or? Um, well, m mine gets direct sunlight, so it's obviously, it would be skewed by its position. Yeah, so you might have to hold the microphone oh, a bit yeah. closer. Yeah, so it's, it's, uh, it, it's, it's uh, okay, right. the, yeah, the temperature is skewed on it, so yeah. because of the sunlight. So um, okay. it always reads higher than the, the BBC temperature. So there is actually another part to the air quality egg, and that is there's a company that aggregates the data from these. So when your device is connected to the internet, it's a, it's a, this company is called COSM or COSM, and they collect the data and make it publicly available. Uh, and then store the data. So they're kind of they're a commercial company. Think of them sort of like Google or whatever, collecting data. Now, the way that the Air Quality Egg project uh, developed is this. It's a kit of parts, most of them which were already available. So they were assembled together in kits that people bought and they put them together. There were some bespoke software written by COSSM. COSM, yeah. And there was money fundraised using a process called Kickstarter where people essentially pledge money and there's no guarantee, they just want to fund the project and says, succeed. Part of the Air Quality Air project is that uh, some of the development happens with its user community who are outside the original company that created it. So it's, uh, it's a community-led project using open source software and hardware, but there are proprietary elements to it. So there's about 180 of these egg quality eggs which were deployed or given or sold to people who had pledged money through the Kickstarter scheme. So you can see it's all around the world actually. There's states of 480 of um, these egg quality eggs. And this was last year, this was last September when I looked at this map. That was just when they started producing the kits and sending them out. And if you want to become involved, you can scan this code or you can just go to the website. There's a wiki um, where people, where you can find the discussion lists, you can find um, all the links you need to buy more bits of equipment or to share your experience, etc. And you can pull software off and reprogram it. Uh, so it is very much a hobbyist device. Would you say that is a correct description, Jason? Uh, yeah, pretty much. Like, um, it, it's not a finished product. So while I've had it, there's been like several software updates, and even to get it initially working, I had to uh, upgrade the software. So it's still very much like a, a work in, in, in progress. It's not very, very polished yet. Um, is it tricky to update the software? Um, if you you need to be reasonably technical, I guess. Like, um, I'm not a hardware person, so I could do some of the updates, but the, the, some of the newer updates that they've done are a bit more involved. But I think if you, if you probably wait it, you know, six months and, and, and bought one then, I think it'll be over a lot of these problems because they, they've, like, really, it's just sort of, it's just sort of, like, been properly released in the last three months. And um, how much did it cost, by the way? Um, it was a hundred and... 
169 pounds. 169 pounds, right? Yeah. Um, it's uh, if you bought the kit, it's probably cheaper. If you if you assemble it yourself, I imagine. Mm. Yeah. So there are some uh, challenges with this approach, the egg quality egg approach. Um, one is that uh, the devices are not calibrated before they're sent out. So my understanding of how uh, commercial digital air quality monitors or pollution monitors work is that the device is built and then it's calibrated at the manufacturer before it's sent uh, or sold commercially. So uh, when you get it, it works and you know that it's reasonably accurate. Uh, most manufacturers do say that they have to be recalibrated after a time, electronic sensors do degrade, etc. So, um, but when you get the when you get your commercial digital air pollution monitor, you can be fairly confident of the of the readings. But because the air quality egg isn't calibrated, you can't be sure of the accuracy of the readings. So that's one of the challenges: is to uh, is there any way they can be calibrated? If it's not calibrated, is there? Is it possible to build a network that works with uncalibrated equipment? So there are some there are some papers to show uh, uh, published academic papers to show that theoretically it works. Not particularly with air quality egg. Um, there's some empirical research using very small temperature sensors in a valley. Uh, but there are loads of underlying assumptions in those things. So at this time, uh, there's still a question about the accuracy of it. And uh, it's not really clear how many people are really using their device to the full or engaging with it. It's, it's, uh, what, what was your motivation for buying one? Do you mind if I ask? Because it's... Um, Did you do you think what I've said is correct? Um, so I, I, I kind of uh, got interested because I saw the King's College project, and then uh, I noticed that Lambeth uh, removed the uh, uh, stopped paying for the um, monitoring station that was in Brixton. Oh, okay. Uh, so what, is, was that last year in 2012? Or? Yeah, yeah. I think uh, you know just cuts. I guess they didn't have money to to keep on uh, using that. And I know that where where I walk home. Uh, is the A23, which is the road to Brighton, and it's really horribly busy and congested. So it's not very pleasant walking up and down there. Um, and I, so I was just quite interested to, to to buy. I heard about this project, so I was quite interested to sort of see what what it, what it would tell me, and it's quite an interesting way to just learn about air quality and yeah. Internet of Things devices. Yeah. So okay. it's kind of like you know partly to force myself to learn about stuff. Yeah, they, they say it's about starting a conversation. I think that's part of the way that they um, message the, the project. Um, and it's there are automatic digital monitors which are deployed by local authorities. There are about 100 in London and about 300 nationally in the UK. So clearly, the, there are devices that exist, but they are a lot more expensive, they are maintained by professionals and they are calibrated, etc. And often they're calibrated um, by using gas diffusion tubes. So there's a sense in which the old and new technologies coexist and are actually independent on each other. So uh, the idea that digital is just going to supersede the analog is certainly not true at present. Um, so one little project that I'm quite interested in pursuing is putting some of these gas diffusion tubes next to an air quality egg and looking at the levels of reported nitrogen dioxide pollution to uh, see what the error is, see the accuracy of the device or, or what's the correlation anyway because that's the thing you can be sure of. So uh, that's about the air quality egg and that's are there any questions or discussion points about?